Hello and welcome to another video. So this video is going to be something slightly different, um, but an exciting one at that. This is a topic that I think a lot of people have been anticipating, um, but today we're going to have our very first look at the new Vanguard app. And I think for many Vanguard investors, this is long overdue. This introduction of the app comes after recent articles surfacing around the growth Vanguard have had in the UK, and according to this article, their expansion of a new Manchester office at the end of 2023. This is Vanguard's latest investment to further appeal and gain market share of its UK investors. Many investors will have seen this message pop up after logging out of their Vanguard account. I decided to sign up quite some time ago now, but thought nothing of it. Then recently, I had an email from Vanguard inviting me to test this new app and provide feedback whilst it's in its production stage. From searching on forums and YouTube as a whole, it would appear that I'm one of very few people to be selected for this pilot. At this stage, there's not too much more to cover, so I think let's dive straight in. Straight away, when we open up the app, we have Face ID, which uh, straight away, that's a great addition. Um, for anyone using the Vanguard platform, we'll probably know we only either have the desktop or the mobile website version at the moment, which means every time you click on that web link, it's username, password, and then a two-factor authentication, which is, you know, it's secure um, and it's fine and it works. Uh, however, um, it can be quite repetitive if you are checking it on a regular basis. Um, so yeah, it's worth noting with this application here on this main screen, you can see a portfolio data. Uh, however, it is a demo account, so I do wish this was <laughs> value in my own account, but that's not the case. So it's provided some example data, which is great for, for this purpose of doing a demo and learning how it works. So straight away on the homepage, we can see we've got a stocks and shares, ISA, uh, and also a personal pension uh, slash retirement uh, account. So bit of a snapshot there of how much is in that account uh, and how much return you've had on each of those values. So I'll dive straight in on the stocks and shares ISA. So let's have a quick look here. Okay, so again, top line data, we can see exactly how much is in the account uh, and also the returns. If we look at the graph here, you've got different switches at the bottom um, to have a look at the different time frames. So if I click on all. I believe the uh, prototype or, or this trial period uh, started in February this year, which kind of makes sense. You can see the start of this graph is February, so that's, that's kind of they've done a year's worth of data from there, which is which is great. Um, you can also click on this graph, so depending which day uh, of the year, and you can look at what the account value was on that specific day. So really quite high level uh, information here, which is useful. If we scroll down further, a bit of a reminder of how much of your ISA allowance you have left. Uh, another great little reminder, it's got no issues with that. Everything seems quite clear so far. We've then got invest and sell buttons, which I'll touch upon shortly. But if you scroll down slightly more, this now gives you the breakdown of what's within that account. So in this demo account, it looks like there's only some cash in there. I imagine the rest of it's been invested uh, and it looks like there's a there's a whole list of different funds here um, so if we pick one at random let's click on VWIL um, let's have a quick look when it loads up okay so we can see the current fund price the one day change um, and then again you, you can kind of scroll with your finger depending what day you'd like to look at the price of um, which I think is pretty good I think here personally, I would have liked to have seen uh, more details about the particular investment you have. So to give you a bit of an idea on the uh, website version and also the mobile website version, when you click on your particular fund, it'll actually have green dots on each position uh, and, and each date that you've bought some, which I think is a nice graphic. So I'd like to see the addition of that in here. Um, you've also got what you've paid in here, so your fund performance, you can see there what you've paid in, the current value, the average unit cost uh, and, and the current fund price, which is a nice snapshot. All the kind of similar information from the normal web version uh, and you've got a bit of a fund overview here. Um, if you click more fund details, what I think it's doing here is actually loading up the web page in the background. You can see it's taking a while to load. Um, it might 
there you go. <laughs> so it's loaded finally. This is the screen from the, the normal uh, mobile website. So I'd like to see more integration there, I think. It doesn't seem as seamless as other apps um, in, in this marketplace. But yeah, you'd have all your normal uh, information on there, which you'd expect from the website. Um, and then past performance by year. So a bit more information there at the bottom. So not too much information. If we go back to our other investments, again, you'd expect that same screen within each one of these. Um, and then you've got a bit of a snapshot there of the asset mix at the bottom. Uh, we can see in this particular account, everything's in shares, so there's no commodities or, or bonds or anything like that. Um, you'll also see at, at the bottom, let's have a look, there's a transic yeah, transaction screen, sorry. Orders, fees, that sort of thing. Uh, which is quite handy to keep a record and also have a look at what's been purchased. So, um, overall on this screen, I think it's pretty good, but I, I do feel like it's lacking a little bit in functionality. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd be interested to hear your feedback on this and what you think should be added in. And then if we go down to the personal pension uh, and pre-retirement, account again very similar to the to the ISA account here you've got the different graphics here um, which looks like there was a set amount in here again you can scroll on the graph for different dates uh, there's some cash in there and it looks like this one is all in a FTSE global fund which seems like quite a wise choice for a pension um, yeah so the screen really is is the same but I like the way how on the home screen it does separate the different accounts should you have multiple. Um, so going back, I mean I could have done this on the pension part, but if I click back on the stocks and shares ISA and scroll down, let's have a look if we click invest. So let's have a quick look at what this looks like. Let's click single payment, uh, buy at next available price. Let's have a look here while it loads. So again, this feels a little bit like it's loading up in the background a web page rather than the fundamentals being built into the app. So I think a bit of a smoother transition there would be accepted and obviously welcomed. So if we click here, add investments, again, this screen looks very similar to the, the desktop and the mobile website version, uh, equity funds. Yeah, so you could add, for example, £100 in here, I imagine, hit next. I imagine this is going to ask where it's coming from as well. So it's at this point you'd then select whether you'd like a one-off card payment or to use the cash from your account. So all pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I do think it's lacking a lot of features. I thought this demo I'd be able to show you a lot more and maybe they'd bring in new features that we haven't seen before, but... This is only the pilot, and I guess this is why they've done this testing phase um, to gather feedback uh, so they can potentially add more features. It is the start of their app, so I guess they're not going to sort of release everything from the get-go, but, but I do hope to see when this finally does go live um, that they bring more features in. Um, just like some of the competition have, like with Trading 2 and 2, there's a lot of analytical information in there. Uh, and a few other things which, are, which I'll touch upon shortly. So that's it for the demo. Um, I guess next I'll cover some of my sort of key thoughts with this um, and potentially some improvements I'd like to see. Okay, so quite a quick demo there, but I wanted to touch upon a couple of points that I think are, are important and, and potentially a little bit of feedback for Vanguard. So, so off the bat, I think quite a clear app. I think all the information is really clear there um, and concise. So no issues there. However, it does feel like it's lacking a lot of features. Um, and that's more in the sort of analytics space. So Vanguard are quite good on the desktop version and also the mobile website version of having a bit of an insights page where you can track by month the performance. Uh, you can also see on a global map where your investments are and, and kind of how much you've got separated between each uh, sort of country and, and different sort of global markets. So I'd like to see the addition of that into the app. So another feature I didn't touch upon in the demo, but I think it's worth noting, um, with buying ETFs usually on the Vanguard platform, 
you can choose two options so you can buy at the live price or buy at the set price that happens once a day um, now the live price means that people can be a little bit reactive to the market and potentially buy when it's at a low and then sell later in the day at a high that's not personally how i invest but i know some people do do that and with the mobile app there is no functionality at the moment to buy and sell etfs at a live price so i think again that probably needs tightening up i'd like to see that feature uh, come in uh, and and who knows vanguard might have that in the pipeline uh, down the line one particular feature I like about uh, platforms such as Trading212 is the community function. So there's there's almost like a community discussion point, uh, an area to post your comments, thoughts, even images, uh, and discuss your investments, which I think drives people to the app more, which I imagine is ultimately what these platforms are trying to achieve. So I think Vanguard have, have really missed uh, a real opportunity there to capitalize by not bringing in that sort of thing. but. Again, this is only a pilot um, and, and potentially they'll look at that down the line. Now, one other thing I was really hoping to see from Vanguard was the ability to purchase fractional shares. Um, you know, if a share of a particular ETF is £100 today, on Vanguard you have to spend £100. Whereas on platforms such as Trading212 and I believe even on Invest Engine, you can buy fractions of that. So if you only have £20, for example, you can invest £20 uh, worth of that share, which I think Vanguard are, are missing out a little bit there. I'd like to see that addition definitely down the line. I think overall, Vanguard have made a step in the right direction by bringing in the mobile app. It's been a frustration for many investors for quite a while, um, so it's definitely good to see. However, the functionality at the moment, from what I can see, is, is primarily for checking your balances and buying and selling. Aside from that, there's not a whole lot of tools or information to go off. This was just a quick snapshot video. Uh, as and when I get any more information, I will of course upload this uh, and make some content on that. It'd be great to hear your feedback. Um, if you spotted anything within that demo that maybe I've glossed over, feel free to write it in the comments and, and generally any feedback or additions you'd like Vanguard to improve on, um, do let me know because I will be typing up um, quite an in-depth feedback form for Vanguard. So now's our opportunity really to, to make this app as best as we can. As ever, thank you for watching and I guess I'll see you in the next video.